Welcome back to the channel. Well, today we're going to do the first video in this series on knife safety and knife use. And I struggled as to which should be the very first video. And I decided to go the route I'm going because to me, you've got to have the proper setup before you get to the safety aspect. So what I'm going to start out with are the basics on types of knives, grips, differences, advantages, uh, drawbacks, strengths, and so forth. So if you look, I have got a assortment of blades laying out here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start talking about the two main types of knives that you'll see in bushcraft, camping, so forth, which are fixed blade and folders. We're going to start out with the fixed blade, then we'll go into the folders, and I'll explain the drawbacks and advantages of each as we go. So let's get right into this and get started. Okay, we'll start out with the fixed blades. Fixed blades are probably the most common, but there are things to consider when purchasing a fixed blade. Uh, each one has its drawbacks, each one has its advantages, and some perform some tasks better than others. Go ahead and get all of these out and laid out here. If you've watched my videos you've seen videos on all of these and what I've got laid out here I've got a SE Azula 2 SE PR4 an SE Laser Strike and an SE5 now when it comes to carving you can carve with any of these knives the problem you'll run into is for instance the SE5 with as thick as it is and as heavy as it is, if you do a lot of carving with it, you'll get a lot of wrist fatigue. Your hands will get tired. And once you start getting fatigued, I have noticed that's when you start getting a little more careless and are more prone to getting cut. Just because your wrist, your hands weak, they're tired, you don't have the control that you did when you first started because of those things. Also, if you've noticed, I've got essentially two different blade styles here. I've got clip and I've got spear. And I take it back. These are considered drop points. I don't know that I've got any fixed blades and clip points. But... <clears throat> The thing that I have found is if you're working in tighter areas when it comes to carving, you can do a lot of finer work in tight areas with a drop point or a clip point knife because you have that fine point. Where with these... And when we get on up into this series to where we actually start doing notches and stuff like that, you'll see what I'm talking about. But with these, where the point is rounded, it's kind of hard to get in and do a real fine carving. But <clears throat> with these, you can baton, you can carve, you can do food prep, you can make tent pegs, make kindling you can do all of that with any of these knives you just have to know the limitation of the knife now granted this one this se5 it's a quarter inch thick the pr4 is just a little over an eighth inch thick this is going to be a whole lot stronger robust blade when it comes to batoning than the PR4, just due to the difference in the blade thicknesses. 
get them around there where you can see them. This one, I have batoned wood, oh, what, four and a half inches? <laughs> That's gone all the way across and a foot, foot and a half long with this one. This one, where the blade's smaller, I'm not going to be able to go as wide a span, but the blade's thinner as well, so I'm not going to split or try to split stuff with this that I would with the SC5. Now, the laser strike, which has become probably my favorite knife, is kind of a combination of the two. It has a little thicker blade stock than the PR4. It still has the spear point, which I like a lot. <clears throat> it's got almost the same length as the SE5. There's maybe a quarter of an inch difference in the actual cutting edge, and that's it. Plus, I like the chawl. The reason I like that chawl is if I'm having to do fine work, I can actually choke up closer to what I'm working on instead of having to hold it back here. Everybody has the preferences. Me, myself, the closer I can get to what I'm working on, the less wrist fatigue and the less tiring it is in the long run. And in a possible survival situation, you need a good robust knife because you may have to split down wood to make kindling and use it to take down wood. With this, I can take it and use a baton and beat it into a tree seven, eight inches in diameter and take out chunks just like I would an ax by using a baton to beat it in and then breaking them out. Now, that being said, I'm not gonna be able to do that with something this size I can still take down trees, but I'm probably going to want to limit it to something the size of that water bottle versus something that big around. But in a survival situation, you may have to carve yourself a spoon, make yourself a spatula, make toggles to hang a pot over a fire. Fire. You may have to make tent pegs like I said, you may have to make your kindling. You may have to do everything. So you as an individual have to figure out what it is that you want. And in doing so, try a bunch of different things. Not all knives are comfortable to all people. My wife, for instance, this one hates it. Does not want to use it. She can use this one but she doesn't like the rounded blade and how round the handle is. The one that she likes the most is the SE3. Again, it's a similar thickness to the BR4. It's got the choil on it so you can work up close, but it kind of falls right in there. So try a bunch of different knives. If you have buddies that will let you borrow a knife for an afternoon, take it out, use it, mess with it, play with it, see what you like about it, what you don't like about it. When you're sitting around not doing nothing at the house, take them out, go out on the back porch, front porch, get you a stick of some kind and just start whittling on it and see where it excels, where it doesn't and things like that. Don't think, well, this one knife's the one I've got to have. This is all I can use. I can't use anything else. Me, it depends on what I'm doing, on which knife I take with me. And that's not uncommon. But with that being said, from fixed blades, they're pretty straightforward. Now what we'll get into is we'll get into folders. And folders, there are a lot of differences. What I've got laying out here is my Swiss Army Victoria Knox Ranger 78, a Gerber. I don't even know what the model number is on this one, but I've had it forever. A case 
two blade trapper and a case barlow now if you look at these you can see there's a lot of size difference in those and folding knives come in all shapes sizes everything and what I've laid out here is an open L number nine and a case large two blade hunter I've done videos on three of these knives and if you want to look and watch those you can uh, but basically on a folder there's two types of folders there are locking and slip joint now locking we'll go over them first there are several types of locking folders the open L for instance when you open it up it has a little collar right here that rotates and locks the blade open makes for a very solid lockup no worry whatsoever if that's ever going to close up on your hand <clears throat> the Ranger 78 is a locking main blade it's the only blade that locks but on it when you open it up you'll hear it click and what it has it has a liner lock and it is activated by the shield on the size, side of the knife when you push it in it moves that liner lock over so that the blade will unlock the Gerber I'm wanting to say this might be called an LST. This is from the mid 90s, I think. On it, it is a more traditional lock back that has the lever on the back of it that you have to push and it raises the mainspring up and unlocks the blade. Now, the advantages of these is if you're carving with them there's less chance of an accidental closure on your hand. Now with these, I haven't had it so much happen with those with the lock lever in the middle, but there are some that the lock lever is all the way back here. And I have been torquing on that handle enough that I've depressed that and unlocked the blade, but not very often. I've had it happen maybe two or three times. But with these, you can carve, you can do food prep, you can whittle, all of that stuff with these. The only problem with these is you can't get into batoning wood and so forth. Now, if you've got a small, thin piece of kindling, say something like that there, it'll pop kindling and small stuff down without any damage to the knife. But when you start getting into something that you actually have to take a baton and beat the back of the blade through, most of the time I have found that when you try that, it causes damage in here. Uh, I have a camulus that I tried to baton through a piece of wood about an inch and a half in diameter, and it messed it up to the point that once I got done, I couldn't close it. So know the limitations of your tools. <clears throat> now, moving on to slip joints these are examples of slip joints slip joints do not have anything that locks them in place other than the tension from the mainspring at half stop if you look you'll see that mainspring is raised up and as I open that blade up you'll see it close back down now with that <clears throat> it's still capable of food prep whittling and carving but if you start putting a lot of pressure on it, that blade may want to fold up. If you're trying to pop out a big piece of wood of a notch or something like that. So you have to watch that and you can't do that. Now, the other advantage of a slip joint is in slip joint, you'll get a whole lot of different blade styles. So I've got a spear point there kind of. A clip point on that one. And those have their advantages on carving and whittling, where this one have a very long clip, but then I also have that one 
which is designed to use when skinning and cleaning animals. But slip joints, they come in all different sizes, two blades, one blade, three blade. Uh, the other day I just gave Robert a canoe knife that had six blades in it. Now why you would ever need six blades, I have no idea. You have also got the four bladed styles. But once you get anything bigger than four cutting blades, I think you're getting into overkill and you're getting into more than you'll need. But where these really excel are on the carving and the food prep because the blade stock is so much thinner. Now that we've talked about the advantages, disadvantages of fixed blades, folders, the different types of folders and all of that, let's get into grip. And this is where it gets interesting. I don't know the proper name for a lot of these, so what I'll do is I'll go over what I call them. And I'll use this one for that. <clears throat> the most common grip you'll use is what I refer to as a hammer grip. <laughs> you hold it just like you would a hammer, just like that. And then you're doing all your cutting, pushing, whatever, that way. Now, I have seen and have done this where you turn it backwards, where the blade is actually facing you. Now, where that comes in is when you're really trying to take off material. You'll take it and hold it and be pulling away from yourself that way, trying to take off large amounts of, of t material at a time. You can take it and do it this way. There's also a thing called a chest lever grip where you lock it, and as you bring your shoulders back, you're cutting that way. <clears throat> there is one that I use a lot called, I call it a sideways hammer, and I hold it just like that. And a lot of times when I'm doing fine carving for notches or Say I'm taking a larger stick and then reducing the end of it smaller to peg it in a hole. I'll use that a lot to do that. And like I said, when we get on into some of these and start doing notches and different things, I'll actually demonstrate a lot of these. And then there's the reverse grip, or at least what I call it, is the reverse grip. Now on this one, a lot of times on it, you're not moving the knife. That's the difference between this and the hammer. On this one, a lot of times, you've got it stuck in something and you're holding it steady and then you're pulling the material across it. <clears throat> like I said, I'm not sure that these are the proper names. This is just what I call them. And all of these grips can be used with a fixed blade or a folder but they become more dangerous with a folder, if that makes sense. And what I mean by that is <clears throat> if you're using a folder and you're holding it doing that, <clears throat> your finger is right there and right there on the blade and the blade's narrow. Also, you have to worry about that blade trying to close up on your fingers. <clears throat> the Reverse hammer, not so much of an issue. The only thing you've got to watch on this, and I've seen people do this, is when they move back, hit that blade on whatever they're working on and fold that blade up. Most knives have a good, strong half stop in it. This one doesn't. This one does. So, again, that's something else to consider. Now, using a lock back, not as much of an issue because the chances of it closing up on you are slim. Unless the lock fails, which very, very rarely ever happens. But I put the grips and the blade types first because of the importance of having an idea on how to hold one. Having what you can do with it in each of the different grips you hold it in. And then knowing the advantages and disadvantages of the different blade types and 
the different knife types between folding and fixed. Now, next video, we're going to get into safety and some basic first aid on this series. And I want to do that now that we have a rough idea on how you can hold them and what you can do with them in different grips and so forth and the advantages and disadvantages between locking and non-locking folders, fixed blade versus folders and so forth. That way we have the basics down and now we can get into the first aid before we actually start using the knives and doing different things with them. Hope you all have found this interesting. Look forward to you coming back for the next video. And right now, the way I've got this laid out, I'm probably going to have at least six or seven in this series. So, sorry that this got a little long. I try to keep them as short as I can, but sometimes there's too much information to do that. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you again soon.